Now let's treat some questions on forces. Let's treat some questions on forces. A ball of mass 400 grams travels with a velocity of 20 meters per second at speed with a bat which acted on it for 0.2 seconds. The ball returns with a velocity of 30 meters per second. Calculate one, the impulse of the ball, two, the force of the bat of the bat on the ball and the force of the ball on the bat. Let's assume that it returns directly backward, tracing the direction it came to hit the ball, just like this. And this is the bat. So the bat returns it along this direction. Now, impulse Ft is equal to change in momentum. Change in momentum. V is equal to <coughs> mv. That is, and what is n? Okay, mv1 minus m v2. What is the mass? 0.2 kg. What is v1? That is 20 meters per second. What is v2? That is minus 30 meters per second. Because it is in the opposite direction. I said it. When you are treating angle momentum, you must put the direction into consideration and handle it as a vector. Therefore, impulse will be equal to 0.2 times 20 minus, minus 0.2 times 30, which is 0.2 times 50, which is equal to 10 newton seconds or kilogram meter per second. <coughs> now let's calculate the force. That is one. Two, force of the bat on the ball. Ball is equal to impulse over time. And that will be equal to 10 over what time? 0.2, which is equal to 50 newton. Three, force of ball on bat is equal to force of bat on ball, which is equal to 50 newton. The direction is just different. The direction is just different. So, and how did we arrive at this? By Newton's Third law of motion. Third law of motion. Action and reaction are equal and opposite. Action and reaction are equal and opposite. So you can see, very easy way to add um, force, impulse, velocity, momentum. Let's do another one. Now you have the question. A car of mass 1,000 kg is accelerating at 2 meters per second. Square. What is the resultant, what resultant force act on the car? If the resistance to the motion is 1,000 newton, what is the force due to the engine? Let's say to the car. And it's moving. The resultant force, you know, after you add and subtract it, you cause the acceleration of the car. And you have been told that the mass is 1,000 kg. A is 2 meters per second squared. Therefore, resultant force F, or R, let me use R, will be equal to MA, which will be equal to 1,000 times 2, which is 2,000 newton. We are, also, we are now told that a resistance force was acting on the car. So the total force of the engine will be equal to this one, you know, plus resistance force. Resistance force. So this one plus this one will be the engine plus FR will be the engine force. Therefore, force due to engine will be equal to 2,000 plus 1,000, which is equal to 3,000 newton. You know, that to overcome this one, 
before it starts accelerating the car. That's very simple. A box of mass 50 kg is pulled off from the hold of a ship by an acceleration of 1 meters per second squared by a vertical rope attached to it. Why the tension in the rope? What is the tension in the rope when the box moves up with the uniform velocity of 1 meters per second? So we have something like this. And then it is now moving with another acceleration. Oh. Because when it is going up with an acceleration, when it is moving with an acceleration, FA will be like acting downwards. It will affect the tension upward. So now tension will be equal to 50. That is mg times 10 meters per second squared. G equals 10 meters per second squared. Plus 50 times 1, which is 550 newton. It now says, find the what is the tension in the rope when the box moves up with a uniform velocity of 1 meters per second? When it moves with uniform velocity, with uniform velocity, A equals zero. Therefore, tension in this instance will be equal to 50 times 10, which is 500 newton. A lift moves up and to down with an acceleration of 2 meters per second squared. Calculate the reaction of the floor on demand of mass 50 kilograms standing in the lift. Let's look at it like this. This is the lift. And a man is standing on it like this. So the, it will have the same acceleration as the lift. Now, if this man moves up like this with acceleration A, it has its weight M G. The, 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 the force, the reaction of the flow or the force will be the force to support this weight and to move this body upward. So R. In this instance, for the first one, it will be equal to mg plus ma, which is equal to m into a plus g, which is 15 into 10 plus 2. That gives us 600 newton. Now, let's look at the situation where the body is now moving downwards with a and mg is there. In this instance, the, 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 the body will, will like want to escape a bit from the lift. So its effect on the lift will be reduced. Therefore, in this instance, R will be equal to Mg minus Ma, which is N into G minus A. And that gives 50 into 10 minus 2, which is 400 newton. So for the first one, when it is accelerating upward, the reaction, the force on the lift will be increased by Ma. When it is coming downward, the force on the lift will be reduced by Ma from the lift. But when it is stationary or moving with constant velocity, the reaction will be Mg. So, when the lift moves with constant velocity or is stationary, the reaction equals to Mg since A acceleration is equal to 0. A ball of mass 0.2 kg falls from a height of 45 meters. On striking the ground, it rebounds in 0.1 seconds with two thirds of the velocity with which it struck the ground. Calculate one, the momentum change on hitting the ground. Two, the force on the ball due to the impact. So if you look at it, it's talking about impulse and force. Let's calculate the velocity by which it hit the ground. So V square equals U square plus 2. A S. What is our V? U is zero. A is G, which is 10 meters per second squared. What is our S? Is equal to H, that is the height, which is 45 meters. Therefore, V squared is equal to 0 plus 2 times 10 times 45, which is what? 900. So our V 
is 30 meters per second. What is the max? 0.2 kg. The velocity of the bounce, that is, the velocity of the bounce is equal to minus 2 over 3 times 30 because it goes in the opposite direction, which is minus 20 meters per second. Now we can calculate the momentum change. One, momentum change will be equal to NV minus NVR, which is N into V minus VR. What does that give us? 0 0.2 into 30 minus, minus 20, which is 0 0.2 times 50. And that is 10 newton seconds. You can also say kilogram meters per second. The second one talk about asking for the force on the ball due to the impact. Force on the ball will be equal to change in momentum over time, which will be 10 over 0 0.1, and that is 100 newton. Because the time given is 0 0.1 seconds over there. Now, a ball of mass 0 0.05 kg strikes a smooth wall normally four times in two seconds with a velocity of 10 meters per second. Each time the ball rebounds with the same velocity of 10 meters per second. Calculate the average force on the wall. Let's see. If this is the wall and the ball hits it like this, it comes back again. So we have NU minus MU as our. Um, Momentum. And we are told that this happens four times in two seconds, which means that it happens at average of two over four seconds. You are now to calculate the average force on the wall. Therefore, changing momentum will be equal to. 0 0.05 into 10 minus minus 10, which will be equal to 20 times 0 0.05. 20 times 0 0.05. And that will be 1. That will be 1. Time for contact. It's, it goes here, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So that would be, so 1, okay, 2 over 4, and that is 1 over 2. Therefore, force is changing momentum. Over time, which is one over half, two newton. So this one is newton seconds. So this one is half second or zero point five seconds. <clears throat> the mass of gas emitted from the rear of a toy rocket is initially zero point one kilogram per second. If the speed of the gas relative to the rock relative to the rocket is fifty meters per second, and the mass of the rocket is 2 kilograms. What is the initial acceleration of the rocket? The first thing is you need to check what is the momentum that the gas develops or the force the gas develops. So the mass of the gas emitted from the rear, so let's see, F is equal to delta P, that is change in momentum over change in time. And let's see, this one is going to be 0 0.1 kilogram per second. And if the speed of the gas relative to the rocket is 50 meters per second times 50 times 50, you can see that all of this that, uh, change in momentum takes place in one second. So the force is going to be 5 newton. Get it, please. This is 0 0.1 kilograms per second. And 
we have speed, relative speed of 50 meters per second. So at the end of the day, we have 0 0.1 kilogram times 50 divided by 1. And at the end of the day, it gave us 5 meters. Now, the acceleration will be equal to F over M, which is 5 over 2. And that gives us 2.5 meters per second squared. Please, I want to get all of this. This is fun. Just look at it, get your formula, and understand the basic concepts. A ball A of mass 0 0.1 kg, moving with a velocity of 6 meters per second, collides directly with a ball B of mass 0 0.2 kg at rest. Calculate their common velocity if both move up together. If A are rebounded with a velocity of 2 meters per second in the opposite direction after collision, what will be the velocity of B? So these are two different situations. In the first part, now for ball A, ball A, U A is equal to 6. M A is equal to 0 0.1 kg. For ball B, U B is equal to 0. And M B is equal to 0 0.2. Now, the first part is telling us that when they collided, they match and they move with common velocity. That's what that will be like. So, by Law of conservation of momentum. NA UA plus MB UB will be equal to NA plus MB with their common velocity. What is NA? 0 0.1. What is UA? 6. What is MB? 0 0.2. What is UB? 0. MA plus MB, that is 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 into B. So this one is now going to be 0 0.1 times 6 is equal to 0 0.3 V. Therefore, the common velocity that they move with will be 0 0.1 times 6 over 0 0.3. And this is going to be 2 meters per second. So they move together with two meters per the velocity of 2 meters per second. Let us now look at the second situation. We are A rebounded with velocity 2 meters per second. So in this instance, we are still going to revert to that law of conservation of momentum. But in this instance, VB, we know it to be minus 2. Because it rebounded in the opposite direction. Oh, sorry, VA. That is the final velocity of A. And VB is now... What you are looking for. Using the um, law of conservation of momentum, momentum before collision is equal to momentum after collision. Therefore, MA, UA plus MB, UB will be equal to MA, VA plus MB, VB. What are you going to have now? We know that this one is going to be 0 0.1 times 0 0.6 plus 0 0.2 times 0 will give us 0 0.1 times minus 2 because it's in the opposite direction plus 0 0.2 times VB this one, oh, sorry, 0 0.1 times 6 this one is 0 0.1 times 6 plus 0 0.2 times 0 is equal to 0 0.1 times minus 2 plus 0 0.2 VB now this one is now going to give us 0 0.6 and it will be equal to Minus 0 0.2 plus so 0 0.2 VB. This one is not going to give us. So VB will be equal to 0 0.6 plus 0 0.2 over 0 0.2. 0 0.8 over 0 0.2. And that will be 4 meters per second. In the direction, initial direction of A, it will go in the other direction to the rebounding. It will be like this. A meeting B. So after, after A goes back with 2 meters per second, B goes this way with 4 meters per second.
That is what happened. A block of mass 20 grams is fired horizontally into a suspended stationary wooden block of mass 380 grams with a velocity of 200 meters per second. What is the velocity of bullets and block if the bullet is embedded inside the block? If the block and bullets experience the constant opposing force of 2 newton, find the time taken by them to come to rest. Now, what do we have? By law of conservation of momentum, you can see that 20 grams times 200 plus 380 grams times 0 will give 20 grams plus 380 v. That's the common velocity. Now here, this is the momentum before collision. This is the momentum after collision. Just to make sure that the law of conservation of momentum is today. So common velocity is what we are trying to get now. Therefore, this one, I cut it, this one is zero. So this one is four. And this one is 400 over 1,000 V. So at the end of the day, 40 over 4 equals to 10 meters per second. So the common velocity is 10 meters per second. Now, you are not told that if the, if the body, the combination um, experiences constant force opposing it, which is 2 Newton, that we should find the time taking for it to come to rest. You can see that, you can see that F T is equal to M V. Because that will cause the change. M V, yeah. If we change it to zero, or we can say for clearer this thing, what is the velocity? What will be the acceleration of this force? So let's go through that way. In this instance, the combination mass is 400 grams, which is 0 0.4 kg. So the deceleration now, A will now be 2 over 0 0.4 which is equal to 2 times 10 over 4. That is 5 meters per second. And we know our velocity now. So, final velocity is 0. Therefore, u plus 80 equals v. What is our u? 10. What is our a? Minus 5. So, T will be equal to 2 meters per second. 2 meters, uh, 2 seconds, sorry. So, our T will now be 2 seconds. And you can also go through this way. Because that is what we change it. And what we did is change in, change in uh, what we call momentum. That is M into V minus 0. That is it. So, you can go through either of these ways. Now, we have a question. A horse directs a horizontal jet of water. Moving with a velocity of 20 meters per second onto a vertical wall, the cross section area of the jet is 5 times 3 to a minus 4 meters squared. If the density of the water is 1,000 kilograms per meter cube, calculate the force of the wall, assuming the water is brought to rest there. So, what does that mean? It says you have a wall like this. And there is a hose now. Sending jet of water here. And immediately the water is getting to velocity of zero. And it says the area of this one is what? 5 times 10 to the power minus 4 meters squared. The speed is what? 20 meters per second. Now, let's calculate the volume that is ejected per second. Volume ejected per second will be equal to that area times velocity. And that will be equal to 5 times 10 with power minus 4 times 20, which equals to 100 times 10 with power minus 4. And it's 10 with power minus 2 meter cube per second. So let's now calculate the mass ejected per second. Mass ejected per second. You could have calculated everything at once. It will be equal to volume per second times density. And that will be equal to 
10 is power minus 2 times 10 is power minus times 10 is power 3, and that is 10 kilogram per second. That's 10 kilograms per second. We are now asked to calculate the force on the wall. And what is the um, momentum per second? So, force is equal to change in momentum per second. And you can see that the change in velocity, the change in velocity, this is the mass, this one is mass times velocity, so this one is time, over time. And you can see that the change in velocity is still uh, 20 minus 0. So we have mass per second times change in velocity, that is 20 minus 0. You can see. This one has taken care of the rate of change totally. So we have 10 times 20, which is equal to 200 newton. So if you have uh, this knowledge of calculus, it will just be a piece of cake. So that's how you calculate it. We have gotten our rate of change, uh, mass per second here. So our change in velocity will just take care of the aspect of velocity. So we don't need to look for time again. That's all. In a nuclear collision, an alpha particle of mass 4 units is incident with a velocity v on a stationary helium nucleus, d, of 4 mass units. After collision, A moves in direction bc, its velocity v over 2. We have bc makes an angle of 60 degrees with the initial direction ad, and the helium nucleus moves along bd, as in the figure. So, what we are now asked to do, so we have to calculate this angle, angle theta, and the velocity of B along BD. Now we can use, as it has presented itself to us, we can use triangle to solve it. And we can use resolution of uh, vectors analysis to do this. So let's try the two. We have initial velocity. Let's look at it in X and Y direction. For A, is 4G. That is, let's say PA1. PB1, that is initial, is equal to 4 times 0. That is 0i. Let's make this i. Now, final velocity of PA of an A, that is P. AF. That's final. Let's break it like this. If you go up, I will give you that the velocity is V over 2 along that direction. So we have V over 2 in this way. So that will be 4 V over 2 60 degrees. So let me now express it in X and Y direction or I and G. Four. Please, when I say I, it's also X direction. J is Y direction. I don't want to be doing it twice. So this will be, so P A F is 2 V 6 degrees. And that will be P A F will be what, um, 2 V for 60 I and plus 2 V times 60g. Now for PB, final, that will be for u. Where u is the velocity. u is the velocity you are looking for. Theta. You can see. Theta degree. So, let me express it in this format. It will now be equal to, or let me just say P, theta. So it will now be P, cos theta i minus p sin theta j. You can see it's downward. Now, you can see that along the horizontal, everything equals to 
This one. Because of the law of conservation of momentum. Momentum before is equal to momentum after. So along the direction, the momentum along x direction, along this direction, will be constant. Therefore, let's now do that. Momentum along i direction. Since this one is only i, I'm going to have 4v is equal to 2v cos 60 plus p cos theta. Now what is v cos 60? Yeah, what is cos 60? Half. So let me, 4v is equal to v plus p cos theta. You can see that. So, p cos theta is equal to 3v. From here. Now let's look along the j direction. Along the j direction now, it means that 2v sine 60 minus p sine theta is equal to 0. Why? Because the initial component of momentum is 0 along the j direction. Therefore, p sine theta is equal to 2v sine 60. And sine 60 is root 3 over 2. So which is v root 3. You can see. And you know that from our trigonometric ratios. OK, let me just do that straight. So I can do it straight. I can, I can find p straight from here. By squaring both sides, I get my p. Or, OK, let me do that. P square cos square theta plus P square sine square theta is equal to 9V square plus 3V square. That is, I square this one, I square this one. So, P square, because cos square theta plus sine square theta is equal to 1, is equal to 12, is equal to 12V square. Therefore, p squared is equal to uh, v squared times 12. p will be equal to v root 12. p is equal to 2v root 3. So we have gotten our momentum. Now let's look, let's get v. And how, what is that? This is 4u is equal to 2v root 3. So you see, for you is equal to 2v root 3. Therefore, u, that is the velocity of v along that direction, is equal to 2v root 3 over 4. That is v root 3 over 2. Therefore, u is equal to 0.866v, approximately 0.9. So it moves in 0.9 v along this direction and v over 2, 0.5 v along the other direction. Now let me find theta. I can easily find theta here in this space. This one and this one. So let me divide this one by this one. That is 2 divided by 1. So I have p sine theta over p cos theta. We do equal to tan theta. And that will be equal to v root 3 over v over 3v. So this one, so I have root 3 over 3. Therefore, and root 3 over 3, we know it's equal to tan 30. So tan theta equals tan 30 degrees. Therefore, theta is equal to 30 degrees. So that's how you, you can easily get this one. You can also use our knowledge of addition of vectors or equilibrium. Now, we know that this is 4v. And we know that this one goes like this, 2u. And 2v, sorry. And this is 60. And here, just have p. You have already know what p is. p is 4u. 
this one is theta. This one is 4v over 2. Please, remember. And this one must be equal to this one. So how do I go about it? I will add these two to be equal to this one. So 2v goes like this. You can see. And this is 60 degrees. And this one is 4. And this one comes like this. You can see. This is theta. So this place is theta as well. And this one is theta. Or let me say 4 u. So let me just use p. So later I'm breaking it down. So if I use cosine rule, cosine rule, p is equal to p squared equals 2v squared plus 4v squared minus 2 into 2v times 4v cos 60 degrees. Cos 60 degrees. That is cosine using cosine root. So p squared will be equal to, this one is 4v squared, this is 16v squared. That's 20 v squared. This is 8v squared times 2 cos 60. So that is 1. So minus 8v squared. That gives me 12v squared. So what is P now? P equals to V root 12, which is 2V root 3. From there now, we know that P equals to 4U, so which is 2V root 3. P equals to 4U, which is 2V root 3. So from here, U will be equal to 2V root 3 over 4. And that is V root 3 over 2. 0 0.86 66v. So v is approximately 0.9v. Now, for us to find the angle, we have known this one here. Let's use sine to find the angle now. So we can see that in this case, p equals to 2v root 3. Using sine root, We can now say 2v root 3 over sine 60 is equal to 2v over sine theta. So sine theta is equal to 2v sine 60 over 2v root 3. So this one cancels this. And sine 60 is root 3 over 2. Root 3 over 2 divided by root 3. So what does that give? Root 3 over 2 root 3. This one cancels this. So sine theta is equal to half. This, this is sine 30 degrees. So theta is equal to 30 degrees. So you can use any format to get it. And you can see, um, momentum is vector. That's why we have to do it like this. A random atom, you travel with a velocity of 5 times 10 to the power 5 meters per second relative to the containing tube. Brace up into krypton, clear, and barium, VA. The krypton atom is ejected directly backward at a velocity 2.35 times 10 to the power 6 meters per second relative to the barium after separation. With what velocity does the barium atom move forward relative to the tube? Assume no other particle is produced and relative Corrections are small. All right. What is the velocity of the krypton atom relative to the containing tube? Now, this is how we're going to handle it. What? This is um, a situation of explosion. You can, you can calculate the velocity relative to that of uranium. Or you calculate it directly relative to the tube. Let's see. Momentum relative to tube. Before collision is equal to momentum after oh before explosion sorry before explosion or break momentum relative to the tube before explosion equals to momentum relative to the tube 
After exclusion. After exclusion. Before, after. Now let's see. What is the momentum before explosion? It is 5 times 10 raised to the power 5 times 2, 3, 5. And what is the momentum relative to the 2 after? It has broken up. And um, we are told that the Clinton atom is ejected directly backward. And that is minus 95. UK. And this one is 140 UB. Where UK is for Criton and UB is for barium. We are also given an additional information that the relative velocity after is 2.35 times 10 to the power 6. What does that mean? It means that the velocity of B is in this way, continuing in this way. And the velocity of k is in this way. So if you subtract b k uk from ub, you get 2.36. U.3 by times 10 to the power 6. And what does that mean? Since you have already said minus k, the ub plus uk is 2.35 times 10 to the power 6. That's now let's solve it out. So let's find UB. UB is 2.35 times 10 to the power 6 minus UK. Now, that's what it will be. Let's substitute this into this first equation. So let's call this one 2. Let's call this one 1. Now, we have 5 times 2.35 times 10 to the power 5 is equal to 140. No, no, no. Okay, sorry, I rather see that I'm going. So this one is the UB. 140 UB minus 95 into 2.35 times 30 to the power 6 minus UB. So this will now give me, this is 90, this will be plus. So 140 plus 95, that will be 235. 235 UB. Minus 95 times 2.35 times 10 root power 6. So that will give me this. Now let's look at it now. We have 5. 5 times 10 root power 5 times 235 is equal to 235 UB. Minus... 95 times 2, 3, 5, times 10 to the power 4. Please, I want you to know. I'll change this one to 10 to the power 4. So let me cancel 2, 3, 5 out, throughout. So I have, this one is 5 times 10 to the power 5, plus 9, 5, times 10 to the power 4, is equal to UB. So, this will now be 5 plus 9.5 times 10 to the power 5, which will be equal to 14.5 times 10 raised to the power 5, 1.45 times 10 raised to the power 6. And that is velocity of the barrier. Velocity of barrier. Relative to the tube. To the tube. Now let's find U, uh, UK. We have, this, we have seen that UK plus UB is equal to 2.35, 2.36, yes, 2.35 times 10 to the power 6. And we have, we have said this one is 1.45. So UK now will be equal to 2.35 minus 1.45. Times 10 raised to the power 6. And that gives 0 0.9 times 10 raised to the power 6. 9 times 10 raised to the power 5. Please don't forget to add meters per second. And for this one too, meters per second.
So those are the things. So you consider the direction anytime you are working this out. Now, because of time, this is another way of looking at it. Momentum relative to uranium before explosion is momentum relative to uranium after explosion. The momentum relative to uranium is 2, 3, 5 times 0, which equals to 140 UB, uh, velocity of barium minus 95 velocity of krypton. Therefore, we have this. We have already known the direction, so we don't need to waste our time. This is the relative velocity of the two, as we are given in the question. Now, we have these two equations. Sorry, I was able to get UB to be 9.5 times 10 to the power 5 meters per second. And UK is minus 1.4 times 10 to the power 6. From there, barium velocity relative to the two is velocity of uranium relative to the two plus velocity of barium relative to uranium. So adding the two, I got 1.25 times 10 to the power 6. Krypton velocity relative to the two is uranium velocity relative to the two plus krypton velocity relative to the uranium. And that is usage of relative velocity in solving our problems. Check very well. Relative to So, you can see. So this is using knowledge of relative velocity per C. And it's easy because it's on the same straight line, parallel line. So momentum relative to uranium because it's the same body, it is zero. So we have two three five times zero is equal to one forty U B plus ninety five U T. Or so I can since I have known the direction, I can say minus. I have known the direction now, I can say minus. So this one doesn't make it one forty. UB is equal to 95 UK. And from this, I can easily know that this one minus this one is equal to 2.35 2 times 10 to the power 6. So UB plus UK is equal to 2.35 times 10 to the power 6. Because this one goes this way, this one goes this way. So I have already known that. So that makes it to be like this. If I make this one plus, I make this one also minus. That is assuming I don't know the direction. So you can try it. You can make this one plus. This one is minus this. And this place will still be minus. Now let's go. So let me now work this out. Let this be my one. Let this be my two. <clears throat> so u k is equal to 2.35 times 10 to the power 6 minus u b. So 140 UB is equal to 95 into 2.35 times 10 to the power 6 minus UB. Yeah. So with this, I can see that 235 UB is equal to 95 times 235 times 10 to the power 4. What is this? I can see that UB is equal to 9.5 times 10 raised to power 5 meters per second. And I've known that UK is towards this direction. So UK will give me 1.4 times 10 raised to power 6 meters per second. This, this is the direction of UK and this is the direction of UB. This is the initial direction of U uranium. So automatically UK will have negative sign. UK will have negative sign. And UB will have positive sign. And U uranium will have positive sign. Now the velocity of barium relative to two will be equal to velocity of barium relative to uranium plus 
velocity of uranium relative to two. You can see. So this is using knowledge of relative velocity. And we have, and this one is equal to 9.5 times 10 to the power 5 plus 5 times 10 to the power 5. This is 1.45 times 10 to the power 6 meters per second. That's the that one. Now, velocity of krypton. Velocity of krypton relative to 2 will be equal to velocity of krypton relative to uranium plus relative of velocity of uranium relative to 2. And this will be equal to minus 1.4 times 10 to the power 6 plus 5 times 10 to the power 5. And that is, that will give me minus 14 plus 5 times 10 to the power 5, which is minus 9 times 10 to the power 5 meters per second. So velocity of crypt relative krypton relative to 2 will be equal to 9 times 10 raised to the power 5 meters per second. 9 times 10 raised to the power 5 meters per second. So that is the other way to look at it. In an elastic head on collision, a ball of mass 1 kilogram moving at 4 meters per second collides with a, collide with a stationary ball of mass 2 kg. Calculate the velocities of the balls after collision, indicating the direction in which they are then traveling. We have two things here. We have the fact that the momentum after is equal to the momentum before. At the same time, the kinetic energy before is the same thing as the kinetic energy after because we have been told it is an elastic head-on collision. Now look at it. For momentum, Momentum before collision is 1 times 4 plus 2 times 0. 4 is the velocity of the first ball, 0 is the velocity of the second ball. Okay, let me do it like this. Ma Ua is equal to m plus mb Ub is equal to Ma Va plus mb V. B. We have FA equals mass of ball A, and that is 1 kg. UA is initial velocity of ball A, and that is 4 meters per second. MB is mass of ball B, and that is 2 kg. UB is mass and velocity, initial velocity of ball B, and that is zero. So VA is final velocity of A, ball A, VB, final velocity of ball B. Now we can work our this thing out. So for momentum, it is conserved. We have momentum before collision equals momentum after collision. So before collision, we have 1 times 4 plus 2 times 0. And that is 1 times VA plus 2 times VB. What does that give us? It means 4 equals VA plus 2 VB. This I hope you understand. I'm taking all these things from here. That's for momentum, this equation. Now, for our kinetic energy. Kinetic energy before is equal to kinetic energy after. And what is our kinetic energy now? It is half mb va squared plus half mb vb squared is equal to half ma, oh sorry, half mb ua squared plus half mb ub squared is equal to half mb va squared plus half mb vb squared. So what does that give us? Half, what is ma? One. What is ua? Four. Squared. 
What is MB? 2. What is UB? 0. So we have this one to be half. What is MA? 1. DA squared plus half times 2 DB squared. Then this one is giving us. Okay, let me multiply 2 by half. So all this one cancels. So I have 16 is equal to dA squared plus 2 bb squared. dA squared plus 2 bb squared. And this one is 4 dA plus 2 bb. Two bb. Subject of the formula now. So V A will equal to 4 minus 2 V B. Substitute this in this case now. I have 16 equals 4 minus 2 V B all squared plus 2 V B squared. So I have 16 equals 16 plus 4 V B squared minus yours 4 times 2 times 2 and that, that gives 8 eh, 16 16 bb plus 2 bb squared so this one so at the end of the day I'm going to have something like this 6 bb squared is equal to 8 bb okay no, let me make it like this 6 bb squared minus 16 bb is equal to 0. Therefore, bb into 6 bb minus 16 equals 0. So bb equals to 0 or 16 over 6, which is 8 over 6 meters per second. Do you know why we have 0 here now? Because that was the initial velocity. It is giving us the initial velocity and final velocity again. You can see. The joint mathematics. Now let us find our VA now. If we substitute this in this equation now, we we'll find our VA. So 16 equals VA. Okay, let it be easier if I put it here now. So 4 minus 2 times 8 over 6 is equal to VA. And what does that give us? No, no, sorry. This is 8 over 3. So, we have 12 minus 16 over 3 equals to VA. And VA is equal to minus 4 over 3 meters per second. So, we have A to B. Minus eight, eh, minus four over three. That is, a goes back. It bounded. It bounced back, and b goes forward with eight over three meters per second. A bounced back with minus four over three meters per second. If you have tried to walk a before, before b, you will get four and minus four over three. It will give you the initial velocity and final velocity also. You can try it at your theater. A gun fires a shell with the horizontal component of its velocity equal to 200 meters per second. At the highest point in, the fly, in its flight, the shell explodes into three fragments. Two of these fragments, which have equal mass, fly off with equal speed of 300 meters per second relative to the ground. One along the flight direction of the shell at the point of fragmentation, and the other perpendicular to it, and in a horizontal plane. Find the magnitude and direction of the velocity of the third fragment immediately after the explosion. I'm assuming its mass is three times that of each of the other two fragments. Neglect air resistance. So what do we have? We have a shell going like this. We are not considering the vertical components. We are just told about the horizontal components. And then it spreads like this. Everything about the vertical components, none of that is our business. So we have just two directions. Forward, sideways. Now, this one, we are not told they break into three. One goes off like this. 
Another one goes up like this. And this one has N, and this one has N. We are told that the third one also breaks up. Find the magnitude and direction of the velocity of the third fragment immediately after. So we know that the third one will go like this. It can come this way, but we know it will come towards this way. But even if it doesn't, the angle will show us. So I was told that this one is 3n. In essence, this one that came to this place is 5n. Because the mass, it must be 3 plus n plus n, which equals to 5n. I was told that its velocity is 200 meters per second. And this one is one, uh, 300 meters per second. This one too is 300 meters per second. 300 meters per second. But this one, we don't know it. Let's call this one V. But we know the mass. And we don't know this angle. Let's call it theta. From the law of conservation, from the principle of conservation of linear momentum, we can say that the momentum of this along this direction is equal or true. Now let's break it down. So, momentum along horizontal direction and vertical direction are same before and after collision. So what do we have here? We can say that before collision, we have 5n times, this is horizontal direction, please. Along the horizontal direction, we can now see 5n times 200 is equal to n times 300 plus 3n v cos theta. 3n v cos theta. Let's do it straight like this. For the vertical direction now, we know that one is zero. So this one will be equal to this one automatically. You can now see n times 3 along, okay, along the j direction, along the, um, the z, because it is sideways, along the perpendicular sideways. You can see 300 m minus 3 m v sine theta is equal to zero. Now, from this place, now let me derive my equation. So this one means that let me divide two. That one cancels. So 700 equals 3n v cos theta from 1. For this one, from this one is 700. Okay, 3v please. 7n equals 3v cos theta. Let me call this 1, 2. Let me call this one 3. For this one now, <coughs> 300 equals. Three V sine theta. <clears throat> three hundred equals three V sine theta. So that is four. Therefore, let me see what the angle is like. Dividing four. Four divided by three. I have three V sine theta over three V. For theta, which equals to seven over uh, three over seven, three over seven, and that is tan theta. So theta is half tan three over seven, and and that is equal to twenty three point two. Degrees. So theta is 23.2 <laughs> degrees. 23.2 degrees. Now, let me now find what V is. For me to find what V is, let me square this, square this, and on adding, I will get this one. So, 3V cos theta squared plus 3V 
sin theta squared is equal to 700 squared plus 300 squared. 700 squared plus 300 squared. So from here, I can see that 9b squared into cos square theta plus sin square theta is equal to 700 squared plus 300 squared. And what does that give me? 9b squared is equal to 100 squared into 49 plus 9. 58 times 10 raised to the power 4. <coughs> 58 times 10 raised to the power 4. Therefore, b squared is equal to 58 over 9 times 10 raised to the power 4. G is equal to square root of this, and that is 4. Let me write this fit 2, 54 meters per second. So the answer G velocity is 254 meters per second. That's the answer. So you can see it's very easy. And you can draw the diagram if you like. You can draw it if you like. And this is a very simple way of solving this. A force of 20 newton acts on a body of mass 2 kg, traveling at 4 meters per second for 0.3 seconds. In the direction of its motion, what is the final velocity of the body? This one is easy. Let's first of all calculate the impulse that the force exerts on the moving body. Impulse exerted on the body is equal to F, which is 20 times 0 0.3, that is 6 newton seconds. And impulse is equal to change in momentum. Of the body, and that is m v minus m u, which is m v minus u. You can see m v minus u. We have v is final velocity, and u is initial velocity. Therefore, m m is a we have given m as two kg. U as 4 meters per second. Therefore, Ft is equal to N into V minus U. 6 is equal to 2 into V minus 4. You can see. And what does that mean? Let's divide both sides by 2. Here we have 3. So V minus 4 is equal to 3. V equals 3 plus 4. V is equal to 7 meters per second. So the final velocity is 7 meters per second. Another way to look at it is calculating the acceleration and then <clears throat> the using the equation of motion to get the final velocity. If f equals 20, m equals 2 kg. So acceleration, a is f over m, which is 20 over 2, and that is 10 meters per second squared, since it is in the direction of the motion of the body. Since it is in the direction of the motion of the body. And we are told that the time t is equal to 0 0.3 seconds. We know that v equals u plus 80. So you can use this equation also. Therefore, v is equal to, and we are told that u is equal to 4 meters per second. So, v is equal to 4 plus 10 times 0 0.3, which is 4 plus 3, and that is 7 meters per second. So you can also look at it from this angle. A body of mass 0.5 kg traveling at 3 meters per second encounters the constant pressure force of 2.5 newton. What is the speed of the body after 2 seconds? You know, Ft is equal to 2.5 times 2, which is 5 newton. And you can see that in this instance, the, the, the impulse is against the direction of motion. So we take the impulse in this instance as negative. Therefore, Ft will be equal to m into v minus u. So our Ft is now negative. Minus 5 is equal to 
m into v minus u. And we know what our u is. U is 3 seconds. 3 meters per second. Sorry. And our m is 0 0.5 feet. Therefore, minus 5 is equal to 0 0.5 into v minus 3. And what does that give us? We have minus 10 is equal to v minus 3. So v is equal to minus 10. So minus 10. A ball of mass 0 0.2 kilogram is dropped from a height of 5 meters onto a concrete floor and rebounds to a height of 2 meters. Find the impulse of the floor on the ball. If the contact lasts 0.05 seconds, find the average force on the ball. G equals 10 meters per second squared. You, this is the situation. The ball force from this place, let's say this is the floor. At this place, U equals to 0. And you are told that the height is 5 meters. So by the time it comes here, it gains velocity. I have velocity V1 here now. When it touches the floor now, it will be affected by the flow. And the velocity it uses to go up now will determine the final height of the ball. I was told that the final height here now is 2 meters. So, in this instance, we have V1 and we have U1 and this one is 0 as well. So, let's calculate V1 and U1. V1 equals U plus a, okay, no. Let me use v square equals u square minus 2ax. Here, s is equal to h, and that will be u square plus 2gh. Our u is 0, so our v square will be equal to 2 times 10 times 5, which is 100. So, V at this point is equal to 10 meters per second. Now, let's calculate this U1 here. What's our final velocity here? Zero. So, V2 is equal to U1 plus 2AX. In this instance, A equals minus G. A equals to G because the G is acting against the motion of the ball. So in this instance, we have U1 plus minus because the G is minus now, minus 2G H2. And what's our H2? 5, uh, 2 meters. So V2 squared, sorry, V2 squared is equal to 2. Um, V2 is equal to 0. U1, unknown. G, we know that one. And H2 is equal to 2 meters. Therefore, 0 is equal to U1 squared minus 2 times 10 times 2. So U squared is equal to U1 squared, sorry. U one squared is equal to 40. Yeah, let me play that. 40. So U is equal to 2 root 10. Yeah, 2 root 10 meters per second. And we are now asked, find the impulse. We have found our U. So our impulse, impulse is equal to change in momentum. Change in momentum. And what's our change in momentum? You know, the U in this instance is going up, and this V is down. So, impulse is equal to M, M that is into U1 minus V1. So, which is equal to, and what is our M? 0 0.2. What is our U1? Minus 2 root 10. What is our um, V1? Sorry. Minus 
minus 10, please. This one is the final velocity, and this is the initial. Now, <clears throat> so let's take upwards, as in the force upwards, positive, and the motion downwards, negative. Or we take this one positive and this one negative. So we have impulse will now be equal to m into v1 minus u1. So that is going up now. You have found the value here now. So this should be 0 0.2 into 10 minus minus 2 root 10. And that is 0 0.2 into 10 plus 2 root 10. So that is the value of the impulse. So this is equal to 3.265 newton seconds. I will show the time used for the contact. Since impulse is empty, 3.265. Therefore, F will be equal to 3.265 over C. And what is our T? 0 0.05. 3.265 over 0 0.05. And what does that give us? 65.3 newton. So, the average force on the ball is 65.3 newton. So we have this. A ton of mass 8 kilograms fires a bullet of mass 80 grams at a speed of 300 meters per second. With what initial speed does the gun recoil? You know, we have it like this. And the bullet is inside the gun. So after the gun shoots the bullet, the bullet goes forward with 300 meters per second, and it weighs 80 grams. And this one moves back with velocity v, and then it weighs 8 kg. But before that explosion occurs, the total velocity was zero. So this is initial situation, final. So initial momentum. equals final momentum. So what do we have here? We have 8 plus 0 0.08. That is everything times 0. But well, that is the initial velocity. Is equal to 8V plus 0 0.08. 0 0.08 times 300. You can see. So what do we have now? We have 8 V or minus 8 V is equal to 8 times 3, which is 24. So V is equal to minus 3 meters per second. And why do we have it as minus? Because it traveled in the opposite direction. That's why we have it as minus 3 meters per second. Two trucks of masses 80 kg and 50 kg are traveling on the same track with speed of 4 meters per second and 2 meters per second. They collide and group together. With what speed do they combine? Two trucks of masses 80 kg and 50 kg are traveling on the same track with speed of 4 meters per second and 2 meters per second respectively in the same direction. They collide and group together. With what speed do they combine? Let's look at the situation. The first truck with mass 80 kg was moving with velocity 4 meters per second. The second truck is also moving on the same track and it was of mass 50 kg and velocity 2 meters per second. Let's say so at the end of the day, finally, the two of them hook up. This one is 80 kg, and this one is 50 kg. And they are moving together. So their total mass is 130 kg. And they are moving with the TV. So this is before collision, and this is after collision. 
Our momentum before is equal to momentum after. And what do we have? 80 times 4 plus 50 times 2 is equal to, let me put it like this, 80 plus 50 into V, which is 130 V. This is 320. And this is 100. It's equal to 130. So this one is going to give us 420 over 130. It's equal to V. So V is equal to 3, 3 meters per second. So the final velocity by which they move together is 3 meters per second. So cancel this and then the final velocity by which they move together is 3.231 meters per second in the same direction. Two balls, mass is 0.8 kg and 0.5 kg, roll towards each other in the same line at speeds of 2 and 3.4 meters per second respectively. After the collision, the first ball is observed to have a speed of 1.5 meters per second in the opposite direction. What is the speed of the second ball after collision? What is the impulse between them? You can easily find the impulse between them because the impulse on the first ball will be the impulse on the second ball. So, impulse between them will be equal to you know, this 0 0.8 had velocity of 2 meters per second initially. So let me make like the V minus U for ball of 0 0.8 kg. Now, what is V for the ball? V for 0 0.8 is equal to minus, let me make that one, 1.5 meters per second. And U is equal to minus 2. And U equals to minus 2 meters per second. Therefore, impulse is equal to 0 0.8 into 1.5 minus minus 2, equal to 0 0.8 times 3.5. And what does that give? 2.8 newton second. 2.8 newton second. So, the impulse on this one is equal to the impulse on that one. You can even use this one to get the final velocity of the second one. So, but let me use equation uh, conservation of momentum. No, conservation of momentum. I will use that one first. So, we have it like this. This ball, 0 0.5, is moving in this direction. Let's make this one negative now. Okay. Let me put it like this. 0 0.5. Moving this way. And with velocity 2 meters per second. And 0 0.8, please. Velocity 2 meters per second. And 0 0.5 is moving with velocity 3.4 meters per second. You can see they oppose each other. So the momentum before, after, they told us that 0 0.8, this one moves after in the opposite direction with 1.5. And this one now, we don't know in which direction, but let's take this positive direction with V. So this is before, collision, after. Now let's work it out. Therefore, 0 0.5 times 3.4 minus, because it's against 0 0.8 times 2 is equal to 0 0.5 V plus 0 0.8 times 1.5 you can see so 0 0.8 times 1.5 the 0 0.8 has now gone in the direction that we are using therefore, this one will now give us so this is 0 0.1 which equals to 0 0.5 V plus 1.2. Now let me subtract 1.2 from both sides. That will give me minus 1.1 is equal to 0 0.5 V. Therefore, V equals to 
minus 1.1 over 0.5, which is minus 2.2 meters per second. So the final velocity for the second one, that is the mass 0.5 is equal to 2.2 meters per second in the opposite direction. That's why you have that minus z. So the initial direction of the 0.5 ball is taken as positive. Now let's look at if we use that ft, that uh, impulse. Now, since we know what the impulse is, understanding it from all this perspective is very important because when you get to higher level, all these things will be brought to form. You know that ft is equal to change in momentum. And from the third law of motion, third Newton's law of motion, we know that ft on the first one will be equal to ft on the second one. Why? The time and force on each ball is equal and opposite. So since we know the magnitude, let's work with the magnitude. So on the ball 0.5 of mass 0.5 kg, Ft equals 2.8 Newton. And we have initial velocity to be 3.4. U equals 3.4. Therefore, 2.8 equals 5 into, and we know that V, so this one is meters per second, V minus U. And, okay, so 2.8 is equal to 5 into V minus, you know, it is in the opposite direction. Therefore, this one will be minus 3.4. So 2.8 over 5. 0.5 will give me V plus 3.4 and this is 5.6 minus 3.4 is equal to V therefore V is equal to 2.2 in the opposite direction in the opposite direction. So you have to put the direction into consideration in the opposite direction of the initial motion of the ball. And this velocity is in the direction of the force. You can see. It's in the direction of the force. This one is in the opposite direction to the force. You can see. So put all this into consideration. You can also start by saying minus 2.8 because it is in the opposite direction to the velocity of the ball. You know, the ball is coming like this. And this one acted like this. So you can say this one is minus to it. So it depends on which one to work with. So what I'm saying is, if you make this one negative, negative, you wouldn't put minus in this place again. You wouldn't put minus in this place again. That's what I'm saying. <coughs> Two equal masses of 3 kg or kilogram rest in equilibrium, suspended at the end of an inextensible string passing over a pulley. A small ring of mass 0.8 kg is threaded on one part of the string and falls down through a distance of 4 meters to strike one of the masses. If it remains in contact with the mass, with what velocity does the system begin to move? So this is what we have. This is the... So, we have this and we have this. So from here to here, there is a ring. This one is... 0.8 kg. This one is 3 kg. 3 kg. It's in equilibrium. And this one now moves from this distance to hit this one. And that is 4 meters. You can see. Once it starts moving, when it gets here, it has a velocity. Let's call this one V. Or U1. Let me make it U1. <coughs> So it moves with velocity u1. So this one now, you can look at it. Even when this one is moving 
After this one, hit this one. After this ring, hit this mass here. It will start moving like this. Because the two of them join together. See, this one is three. And this one is three. And 0 0.8. Note one thing. The effect of the gravitational force will be nullified. Why? Because G is acting here. And G is also acting. How do I put it? G is acting against this one. And G is supporting this one. That is, this one, G, the effect of G here is deceleration. Here it is acceleration. And the masses are equal. So, the ring comes here from 4 meters height. And they start moving. This one starts moving now, this one starts moving now. Let's look at the, um, as they are in equilibrium, initial velocity. of the masses and the ring is equal to zero. Fine. But when this ring is dropped, after dropping, please, I want you to understand the stages. After dropping, the ring hits the mass with velocity u1 and how do I find that? let's use v square equals u square plus 2 a s a is g and s is height so v square sorry I'd rather make that for u1 squared sorry u1 squared that is the velocity at v with which it hits the mass U1 squared is equal to, this one is 0, plus 2 times 10 times 4. And that is equal to 80. So U1 is equal to root of 80. Can I from there? A equals 2 root hmm, 80. That's 16. 4 root 5 meters per second. Let me express it like that. Now, which means the momentum before collision will be the momentum of this ring. The momentum after collision will be the momentum of the total movement because this one is now attached to this. And what will that be? Momentum before collision. Before collision is equal to 0 0.8 times 4 root 5, which is 3.2 root 5 newton second, or meter, kilogram meters per second. Momentum after. Momentum after. Because they are not moving with common velocity, all of them are attached, will be equal to 3 plus 3 plus 0 0.8 into V. That is the common velocity. Therefore, V will be equal to 3.2 root 5 over 6.8 meters per second. Let me calculate that with my calculator. And that is 1.052 meters per second. So that's why, since it is attached, you move it V, V. So that is why we have it like that. A rocket. Of mass 1,000 kg containing a propellant gas of 3,000 kg is launched vertically. If the fuel consumed at a steady rate of 60 kg per second, calculate the least velocity of the exhaust gases. If the rocket and content will just lift off the launching pad immediately after firing, we understand that impulse is equal to change in momentum. Change the momentum. And in this instance, the impulse that the gas generates, impulse generated by the gas, by the 
Et dos gases. Par second. On dit go to the weight of the rocket plus propellant. Now let's calculate the impulse per second of the gas. So we have impulse per second will be equal to mass per second into delta V. And which is mass per second into V minus U. V is the velocity of exhaust gases. U is initial velocity of exhaust gases. Initial velocity of the exhaust gases, and that is equal to zero. Therefore, we have the mass per second. Impulse per second should be equal to 60. And what is our velocity? Take the velocity that is v minus zero, which is 60 v. This, this one is different. And that is 60 v for us. And we have said that this should be equal to the weight of the rocket and propeller. So 60 v must be equal to 1,000 plus 3,000 into V. L. Times G, sorry. Times G. So 60 V is equal to 1,000 plus 3,000 G, which is 4,000 times 10. And that is 40,000. Therefore, V will be equal to 40,000 over 60. And that should give us six here yeah, six 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 point seven meters per second. A fifteen kilogram block hangs from a cord suspended from the ceiling of an elevator. The cord can withstand a tension of two hundred newton and breaks as the elevator accelerates. What is the maximum acceleration upward? How do we look at it? This is the elevator ceiling. And this is the block. And we are told the block is 15 kg. So which means that if the elevator is moving upward with contact velocity or is at rest, the force on this um, cord will be equal to 115 Newton. So this is at rest or uniform velocity. But now, if it accelerates upward, the tension will increase. And this is what we have. We are going to have 115 Newton. Again, on this rope, because as it is moving, extra force will be added here. There will be extra MA. So, C will be here. And for this not to break, this A must not exceed certain value. Therefore, C is equal to or less than, let me make it like that. C is equal to or less than 115 plus 15 A. And that is 200, 115 plus 15 A. So 50 over 15 A. Oh, 15A should be. So, this is it. 5S3, 5S10. So, A will be greater than or equal to 3.33 meters per second squared. Raindrop strikes a roof with a velocity of 3 meters per second and a volume of 2.5 times 10 to the power minus 2 meter cube of water is collected from the 
roof in one minute. Assuming that the conditions are steady and that the velocity of the raindrops after impact is zero, calculate the vertical force exerted on the roof by the impact of the falling rain. Now we know one thing. We know some things now. We are given velocity. Velocity. Initial is equal to 3 meters per second. Final velocity is equal to zero because we are told that it becomes zero. The density is equal to 1,000 kilogram per meter cube. And we are told that the volume collected per minute volume per minute is equal to 2.5 times 10 raised to the power minus 2 meter cube. So, volume per second is equal to 2.5 times 10 raised to the power minus 2 meter cube over 60. Therefore, mass per second is equal to 2.5 times 10 raised to the power minus 2 times 10 to the power 3 over 60. That is volume per second times rho because rho v is equal to m over s. Density times volume is equal to mass. That's what I tried to show you. Now we have known this. And ft ft is equal to Mass into change in velocity. That is, impulse is equal to change in momentum. So we can now say F is equal to mass per second over change in velocity, which is equal to 2.5 times 10 to the power minus 2 <coughs> times 1000 over 16. into what is the change in velocity? <coughs> Zero minus minus three. <coughs> and that is 2.5 times 10 over 60 times three. So this one becomes 10. Now let me cut it. This one is two. And that is 1.25 newton. That's all. That's 1.25 newton.